Hi, it's Tom at app19.com with the Auditor Hints and Tips webcast number two. So this is the second in a series of Hints and Tips webcasts that just to have a, a collection of various productivity and effectiveness and efficiency type tools that are available for you. So what are we going to cover? Well, first off, we're going to take a look at how to minimize scrolling and clicks by setting the details button behavior. Next, we're going to look at how to just speed up sending emails. When you do create a report, you want to quickly either push it up to your cloud drive or email it. We'll show you a quick way to include a number of recipients on the to line of your email. For topic number three, we're going to cover the image compression factor and rotation angle settings. So this is a very important topic if you're running on a tablet that only has a front-facing camera, like a Kindle Fire. Also, we'll take a look at how to reduce the amount of storage space needed for your reports by using the image compression factor. This is particularly important for today's modern mobile devices, which are capable of using between 5 and 10 megabytes per image taken. Next, we're going to take a look at how to delete an image that you may have captured. And lastly, we're going to take a look at how you might want to replace an image. Let's say you captured a, an image of a defect and decided that you wanted to use the uh, plain vanilla camera on your mobile device to capture the image in, instead of the camera tool that's inside of the auditor apps. There's an easy way to do that, and we'll be covering that. So on we go to topic number one, how to minimize clicking and scrolling. So you'll note on this screen we have two apartments and we're going to go into the details for the apartment called Hints and Tips Webcast 2. I'm going to tap on that apartment and select Apartment and Landlord. And you'll notice this screen is currently set up and configured so that we see the nickname for the apartment, the landlord's name, and then the details for each of the three sections. Landlord info section, the cost and size of the apartment section, and the photo and notes are all collapsed. If I click on photo and notes, for instance, I'll see that there are some notes and a picture of the apartment underneath it. Under the cost and size, you'll note that there's no data that's been provided. I don't have any costing or size information present. And up at the top, the landlord info, if I tap on that, it looks like I've provided uh, an apartment name, a phone number, an email address for the landlord. And we did have a, a date that the apartment was visited on. So the behavior of these three buttons can be controlled by you by going back to the home screen tapping on the settings button, scrolling about halfway down the various settings, and this region or this group of, of controls that we see called details button behavior is how we control the behavior of the more and less sections. So if I tap on the middle choice, details expanded if data is present, this simply means that if data is in a given section, it will automatically be expanded when I go into that particular screen. So again, I'm going to tap on Apartment and Landlord. And this time, we'll see that two of the sections, both sections with data, which was the Landlord Info section right here, and the Photo and Notes section have been expanded, whereas the More Detail, More and Less Detail for the Cost and Size has not been expanded, although we could expand it. But this simply allows us a faster way to minimize scrolling and clicking as we use any of the Auditor apps. So let's go back to our list of hints and tips and take a look at topic two, which is using multiple recipient email addresses. OK, so I'm running on a Nexus 7 tablet. And let's take a look at the default 
the settings for sending an email. We're going to tap the report button or reports button. Select manage existing reports. I've got several reports that I've created here. The report at the top is selected and I'm going to tap the email button on the menu bar all the way at the bottom. And I'm going to select Gmail and here we see the Gmail client started up and notice that the to line of the email i.e. the recipient line is not uh, completed. So let me show you how we can autofill that using Apartment Auditor. And by the way, this applies to all of the Auditor apps. So let's select the back button. Let's head back home. Let's tap the Settings button. Go into App and User Settings. And the second field that you can populate which says send audit reports to this email. We're going to populate some email addresses in that separated by commas. So I'm going to, I've already put these in the cut and paste buffer. I'm just going to paste these back into it. You see three email addresses there, Wally123, Sue23, and Mrs. Smith. We'll now tap the home button. Now we go back to reports, tap the reports button, manage existing reports. Tap email, and again we're going to email the PDF report that's up top, the very top of the list. Gmail, and there you'll see that the three addresses that I put in, Mrs. Smith, Wally123, and Sue23, have been, been populated for me. So if you do send a lot of reports and you find yourself retyping that email address all the time, there's an easy way to eliminate that redundant work by populating that field on the app and user settings. Okay, on to topic three for this webcast, the image compression factor and rotation angle settings for the camera on your device. So I'm going to use Apartment Auditor to demonstrate these two settings, but again, they would apply to any of the apps in the Auditor suite. So before we do that though, let's clean up our display. Um, we have two apartments here, number three and four, that I'm going to delete. I'm going to tap on each of them and simply select Delete Apartment. And I'll get number three here. Okay, next what I'm going to do is just go in and create a new apartment. And I'm going to tap the Start button and enter a name. We'll just call it Test Apartment. And we'll say the landlord is Roberto. Okay, so now we're going to just tap the Rooms button and proceed to create a room. I'm going to use the swiping action here. I could hit the Add Room button down in the lower left corner, but I'm going to just swipe right to left it doesn't matter what type of room I create because I'm just demonstrating again two parameters, two settings for the camera. So I'm going to just go in and tap Atrium and I'm going to add a feature to the Atrium. Again, it doesn't matter what type of feature because I really just want to get right in and use the uh, camera. I'm going to tap More Details and then tap the camera image which will take me into the camera capture screen and here we see a picture of two lads and I'm going to take their picture take a picture of the picture and next I'm going to go in and tap the settings button this is the fourth uh, button down on the bottom row second button from the right and we'll see these two settings so we've got something called the image compression factor and if I tap on the drop down for that, I'm going to see values ranging from 1x up to 10x, and then they'll jump from 15x to 20x. So this setting, or this factor, simply refers to the amount of reduction in the storage that will be needed for each of the images that you capture. If I set it to 1x, it simply means that there will be no reduction in storage and the image will be stored at the regular setting for the camera. If I set it to 4x, it means that I'll reduce the amount of storage by a factor of 4x. In doing that, I will lose some resolution associated with the image. 
Okay, so if I save these settings, tap save, and then retake the picture. Notice it says image compression factor 4x, and then tap the add button. I've now added this photo to my feature that was in apartment auditor here, and I've reduced the amount of storage space by a factor of uh, 4x, or I'm using about 25% of the storage that would have normally been necessary. The resolution of the photo that we see here is reasonable. Obviously, if I go in and change this so that the factor is 10x, so I'm, I'm consuming one-tenth the amount of space, and then I retake this photo, let me show you the impact that this will have on the resolution. Tap Photo, take the picture, hit the Add button. We'll see that the image is lost uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of its uh, resolution, right? So you would probably not want to use a factor of 10x unless, of course, you had a very high-res camera on your device. I'm going to tap the Settings button, go back, and set this to 4x, which is a reasonable setting for most rear-facing cameras put onto the market, say, and from 2012 onward. Lastly, I should point out that if you are running on a inexpensive tablet, which only has a front-facing camera, we recommend that you use a factor of 1x because front-facing cameras are traditionally much lower resolution, only uh, anywhere from a third of a, of a megapixel to maybe up to one and a half to three uh, megapixels. So for front-facing camera um, devices, please set this to 1x. I'm going to set it back to 4x. Camera correction angle simply refers to the angle that the picture will be rotated once it's taken. If I set this to 90 degrees, hit save, take an image, capture a photo that is. So here we see that the image has been rotated 90 degrees, in this case, um, what would that be, clockwise. So I can always tap the spin button down in the lower right, in this case three times to, to rotate the image so that it's correct. But this is an important setting again for tablets that are traditionally less expensive or in this case we also found that for the Amazon Kindle the Kindle would always rotate images 180 degrees. So they, they would actually be flipped upside down similar to what I'll show you right now. Let's retake this image. So the Kindle would show photos like this, and it required users to tap the Spin button twice to always bring the images uh, around so that they were proper. And um, what this setting allows us to do, of course, is just set that rotation for every photo that's taken. Now, the last thing I did want to mention is that these settings are also available in the app and user settings from the home screen. So if I tap settings here, you'll see both of these settings right here in the middle of the screen. And there's an excellent write-up. If you tap the help button, you'll see a, a, a nice overview uh, that you can use as a refresh too for both of these settings. Okay, that's it for this particular topic. Let's move on to the next topic, which is how to delete and remove uh, or replace images that you may have captured. You examples of how to delete and replace existing images in an apartment. I'm going to use Apartment Auditor, but again, this would apply to any photograph in any of the Auditor suite of apps. You can see that I've created a couple of test apartments here, really uh, apartment two and three. We're going to go into apartment two by swiping across it. And then we're going to go uh, into the all-purpose room first because that's got the photo 
with a feature that we're going to delete. So again, I'm going to swipe on top of it, right to left. And there's the railing. Let's go into this feature. And we'll see, you can see this picture of a railing. And I simply want to delete this photo. Now, why might you be in this situation? Well, maybe you have um, an apartment or a home in which you've captured lots of images and you've decided, you know, this image that I took of this defect or this feature uh, really isn't the best image. In fact, maybe it's misleading or it doesn't represent reality the way it really should. So you've decided it'd be better off in your report if the image were removed. So the way you can do that is just simply to a tap and hold on any image. I'm going to do that in the middle. A context dialog box will show up and we're just going to pick remove image and there it goes. It's now gone. So we're back into the state where we could tap on the little camera icon there in order to provide a different image. Now you might ask, um, where are these images stored? I want to remind you of that. So let's tap the back button. Again, tap it again. We're just going to go all the way back to the home screen and go into settings. And then you'll see right in about the middle of this webcast screen, the folder, the photos folder on SD card. This tells us the path where images are being stored. So in the case of Apartment Auditor, we have a folder here called AA. That is its storage emulated zero auditor AA images. All the images that you take with Apartment Auditor are stored in the images subfolder. So if this instead were Home Auditor, instead of the AA that we have there as the uh, second to last folder path, we would see a HA. Likewise, if it were Dorm Auditor, we would see a DA, and so on and so forth. Now, another way to show this to you is to use Astro File Manager, which I'm going to pull up right now and again show you the directory structure. This is again a Nexus seven tablet that I'm running on, we can see in the upper right corner the auditor folder that's been created by Apartment Auditor. I have an AA folder underneath here, meaning Apartment Auditor. This folder would be called HA if it were Home Auditor. Under here I have the four folders for the Apartment Auditor app. If I tap on Images, this is where all the images are going to be stored. So this is significant for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is to make you aware that Apartment Auditor will never delete any images that have been captured, the actual PNG or JPEG file. Instead, what it will do is uh, remove the reference to that image uh, from the database that's used. So it's also important that I used Astro File Manager here so that I could show you the next scenario. So we have a case the second scenario, we want to replace an existing image that was captured with another image. Now, this image may have been captured, let's say, with the, with the native camera application that's included with your mobile device. So what you see in this image, or what you see on the screen now, is two images of cracked concrete. The first one, which says better shot, crackedconcrete.png, and then the one beneath that is the one that was actually captured when the audit was done. So very quickly here, I'm going to go back. Here we're going to replace the lower one with the one that was captured using the native camera app that's included with the Nexus 7 here. So let's go back to Apartment Auditor. We'll go back to the Home menu. And then what we're going to do is swipe on top of the Hints and Tips webcast to Apartment into the Patio Room. And then there you'll see the, def uh, the feature, which is Floor. And we can now see the existing image that was captured for this 
defective concrete and you can see the comment that was captured there too. This concrete floor will need to be replaced. It is severely cracked. So this scenario again is I would like to use a different image for this defect. Once again, just like the delete, I'm going to tap and hold or do what's called a long press on the actual image of the concrete. Up comes a context menu and I'm going to replace the image. I'm going to pick the middle option here. It now prompts me basically for a file name. Again, the file, the image file has to be in the images subfolder. I've already put the name of the file uh, into the cut and paste buffer available to us. So I'm going to tap into that field and go paste. And now I'm going to just hit the OK button. And up comes this much more cracked image of concrete that uh, better exemplifies reality, I guess. So that is how you replace an existing image. And uh, with that, we're going to just head back to the home screen. And I hope you found this very long or relatively long hints and tips webcast number two to be helpful in uh, allowing you to leverage all the possibilities that are available with the auditor apps. Thanks for watching.